Pastor Biden, I understand you're a Roman Catholic, and uh, the Catholic Church, from what I understand, is is pro-life. They have this uh, 40 days for life and everything, and yet you favor the killing of the preborn. Does the does the Pope know about that? Do 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 you have a phone number so we could call the Pope? Uh, I think uh, the Pope needs to know about this. And uh, while you're at it, just ask them why they still haven't excommunicated Hitler. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people, a lot of Jewish friends would want to know that, too. But uh, anyway, my name is Tim Behrens. We try to avoid controversy on this program. Let me get the tongue out of my cheek. And uh, I'm coming to you from the secret suicide capital of the world, where suicides are not reported here, but in the hometowns of where people came from. Because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But God knows, doesn't he? It's a delight to do this program. And I have as my guest today a fella who loves to avoid controversy as well. He works for an organization that I don't think has ever been controversial. Uh, my good friend David Daniels. But first, before I tell you about Chick Publications and David Daniels and introduce you to him, I want to make sure you get out and vote if you have not voted. Um, you have a, a choice between a man who's pro-life, who's appointed more pro-life judges than anyone else, a man who's moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem when George Bush, George W. Bush said he'd do it and he didn't do it, and other uh, presidents said they would do it. And so it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, you either have uh, a democracy or you have communism. It's, it's that clear. It's that, uh, it's, you know, I just... Anyway, David Daniels, hello. Hello, how are you doing? Good, brother. How are you? I'm doing very well. Well, trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. The little mission fields will be coming to our doors tonight. I know of Christians that just shut off the lights. They don't want them coming to their door. Now, I don't know how many will be coming with this this pandemic. But uh, uh, first of all, for folks who are not familiar with Chick Publications, uh, is that a publication about women uh what what is chick publications well first of all its name simply comes from jack thomas chick the guy who created it it, w- it wasn't even his idea he wanted it like in his service or something but nonetheless somebody else named it and they published his first tract and said he didn't know on a name and the guy printer comes back to him and says well, you got a name now. Your chick publication. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your order. <laughs> got to put a name on it somehow. Yeah. So yeah. It's a, the whole idea that Jack Chick had was using the thing that he did best, and that's draw comics to uh, cartoons uh, to communicate the gospel message to people in a way that gets them to grab a hold of it and then listen to the story, read the story, and then learn how they too can become saved. Amen. John Wesley, the great evangelist, said a, a tract is the easiest way to approach a person. And uh, I'm telling you, people will read tracts before they read books. And uh, uh, Jack had a real love for the Lord. And what I admired about I'm, there are a lot of things I admired about Jack. But one of the things I admired about it, him was the stand he took on the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, there are a lot of men that would have been more concerned about their business. They would lose a lot of money if they did that, if they put out tracks that exposed Rome. But Jack didn't care. What, what made Jack different? The fact that he looked beyond how people felt to what happens in eternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many people don't have this idea that one moment, one nanosecond after you stop breathing on this earth, you're going someplace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the question is, where is that place you are going? Yeah. Where are you going? Yeah. And that place that you go to, you never leave. I mean, you, you're there for eternity until somebody moves you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're, that's it. Yeah. You're either going to be with God or you're going to be against God. Right. And it doesn't matter what you think about God. It doesn't matter what you think God can do. It doesn't matter whether you like him. What matters is whether or not you're his. Yeah. He yep. will judge you on that basis. And he says in Romans chapter 1 that everybody inside themselves knows the truth. Mm. And so that they spend their lives hiding from it, running from it, rationalizing it, or bowing down to it. Right. Or right. simply deciding they don't want to serve, but they will have to live with that for all eternity. David Daniels is my guest uh, from Chick Publications. David, um, how do we respond to the little mission fields that will be coming to our doors tonight? The only night of the year that they come to our door. How should we handle this? 
Well, first of all, you got to think about it's not just them. It's the people behind them. It's the families. Mm -hmm. There's families. There's friends. So anything you can put in their hands that lasts longer than the time it takes to digest a candy bar stays with them for a while. Yeah. And if you got a gospel tract that has something interesting, not some big long lecture. Once when when I was a little kid, I once got a a big bunch of words and it didn't work for me. And it wasn't until I was a grown up and and uh, thinking about it that I suddenly realized, oh wait. That was like a gospel thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I had no idea. But a chick track, that's a story. Yeah. And that yeah. pulled me in. And what's neat about the story is that, like you call it, the little missionary, it goes into their pocket. It goes into their bag. It goes, mm -hmm. in, and then it gets opened up and looked at. And if nothing else, the cartoons pull them in. Mm -hmm. And then the message, and hopefully the story, brings them through until they realize that they themselves need Jesus Christ in their lives. And if they have Jesus... They need other people to have Jesus in their life. That's right. That's right. And I have found that children accept tracts more so than adults. Have you found that to be true? Actually, I've not had much of a problem. I've, I, I did have two kids one time refuse tracts. That was when I was going door to door, door knocking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I offered him that. And he was on a little Game Boy thing or something. You know, one of those little things you hold in your hand and play games with. Mm -hmm. uh, little, and he said, no, I got this. He's like, do you want to read a cartoon? No, no. Uh, no. He just actually said no. Mm. That's like almost the only one I've ever seen in my life. I've had a few adults, so maybe six, seven, eight, less than ten so far. Yeah. They know that I know it. I remember but the vast majority where I am say yes. It's amazing. Yeah. We're Southern California, yeah. and they say yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, w one thing that really bothered me when I would be on the bridge handing out tracts, when families would come across, I would try to give it to the mother or father, and many times they would turn me down. And one day the Lord impressed upon me to, to give it to the kids and say this, and this is what I would say when little Susie was holding onto Mommy's hand. I'd say, give this to Mommy. Tell her it's about Jesus. And nine times out of ten, that little hand reaches up for the track. <laughs> and every once in a while, Dad or Mom will say, don't touch that. You know, because a lot of porn gets handed out here in uh, Lost Wages. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it, and it's just so amazing how my father was a Baptist preacher, and he handed out tracts, and, and we were pulling into a gas station one time in the Plymouth Station wagon. I was the oldest of six, and Dad said, Tim, get a track out of the glove compartment. And I turned to him, and I said, do we have to hand a track to everybody? And of course, here I am, a half century later, probably handed out a million tracks in that uh, in those 50 years. But I, I, I look on it as, you know, Penn Jillette, the atheist, said, you know, he said, I'm an atheist, but I don't have any problem with believers proselytizing or witnessing, because if I really believed in heaven and I really believed in hell, how badly would I have to hate somebody not to tell them? And that really nails it right there. If we really believe in heaven and hell, <clears throat> and we really believe that Jesus Christ has saved our soul after we repented of our sins, we're going to have a, a love for souls. Do you agree? Absolutely. In fact, um, for me, you know, I've written a whole bunch of books, a lot of them on the King James Bible, mm -hmm. completely having a different background from that. But what I saw, what I first found when I started reading the King James Bible is that I had no excuse about hell, despite the fact that I'm ordained and everything else, when I realized that fact, the first thing that popped up to me when I came to the King James Bible, two days later, the first thing I realized is, these Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door, they're going to go to hell mm. if they don't have Jesus. And it doesn't matter how nice they are. They could be the most wonderful people in the world. What kind of a jerk would I be if I knew that those wonderful people are still not following Jesus Christ? They gotta, they're going to go to hell. They've got to place their faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So and even if, what if they don't believe in hell? Well, they don't. Jehovah's Witnesses believe in annihilation. They don't believe in hell. But I want to reach them. And that heart for them, them, caring about them. People say, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. How much more would their feelings be hurt if they're condemned to an eternity in hell? Yeah, yeah. Boy, that's so true. Uh, you know, it's just, it's so sad. Why? What is it that causes people from mainline denominations uh, to convert to the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons? What is it? For a lot of people, they want a set system that tells you this is what you do, and if you meet these obligations, you're in. Mm -hmm. What's really funny is they think it's too easy to simply place their faith in God's 
son, Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. who paid all the debt for them. Mm -hmm. They think it's too easy to do that. There's got to be some catch to it. And religion is the binding, from religio to bind. The religion is binding people to a system. Mm -hmm. And what what the Bible offers, what God himself offers, is a freedom from a system. Mm-hmm. Now, does he give you? Does he, did he make a way to replicate mm-hmm. what God wants in His people and how He wants people to communicate with each other, to fellowship and associate? And yes, did He create systems and talk about this is what your body does and is supposed to do, and this is what your body's not supposed to do. This will help you. This will hurt you. Yes, the Bible's full of that. Mm-hmm. But it's not a system saying do this or don't do that, or or God won't like you anymore. Like no. It's organic. You're adopted into the family of God. You, a human, are adopted into the perfect God's family and are given the new, the new you, that, that new man, as they call it, or the new creation, by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. They say, oh, that's too easy. No, it's not too easy. It's too easy and too hard. You made it too hard because you're intellectualizing it. Mm-hmm. It's not about your intellect. It's about your heart. Yeah. And so we're just offering them freedom, and then their heart can be set to Jesus Christ. Then they can learn how they work the best by reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. It's an amazingly simple thing that God has presented to us, and people have rejected it because their intellect makes them think that they must be able to have a better way, yeah. and there is no better way. Yeah, yeah, and a wonderful verse to share with our Jehovah's Witness friends when they come to the door is 1 John 5.20, and we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Once you read that, too. Well, I'm sorry? Yeah. I said, that's right, the Father and the Son. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the true God. Yep, yep. And so, all right, now, what do you say, you were talking about the King James Version there, uh, what do you say to the person who's listening who says, uh, well, you know, I'd, I'd like to get a Bible for my kids, uh, uh, but the King James has all these these and thous. So am, am I not better off getting the, the nearly inspired version? I mean, the NIV <laughs> or, or one of the other versions that make it easier to read? Uh, what would you say to those parents? If you supposedly are making it easier to read by taking away from what God said or adding your own opinions to what God said, is that really better? I want to know what God said. Mm -hmm. And we say, we don't say, my country, it is of you, singular, sweet land of. Mm -hmm. We know these words, be thou and thy, we say them all the time. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Oh, look at those words are there too. I did a video on this Mm -hmm. showing all the times we use these words. We know what they mean. If it has a T sound or a T, it's singular. And if it's ye, you, your, it's plural. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once you get past those simple things like that, um, the fact is, though, this is modern English. This is the beginning of modern English. Mm -hmm. The King James Bible was what cemented the English language together. Our dictionaries were originally made by taking verses out of the King James Bible. Amazing. Oxford Underbridge English Dictionary, and even done in the first American English Dictionary under Noah Webster. This is English language. You want to learn good English, you have to learn it from the Bible. But more than that, learning those words, you can't read Shakespeare without it. No. (laughs) You read these words, you simply enhance your English. You don't take away from it. And once you know them, you let them sit inside you, the Holy Ghost will witness inside you the truth. And you'll realize that all you're getting in those words is what God said. I can't imagine singing, Come you fount of every blessing in church, instead of (laughs) Come thou fount. You know, um, Revelation 22, 19 says, And if any man shall take away the words from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book now yes. there are a lot of these translations that have a lot of missing words how many missing words are there from the bible from the originals uh, in the niv in the new king james well it depends on how you number them but if you because of course when you when you say the same Greek word in, in different English words, it can take two or three words or be one word. It, it all depends. It could be 10,000 or more. But what matters is the verses from which God's words are added to or taken away from. In my book, um, Look What's Missing, for instance, it makes it real easy. I give 
257 solid verses you can look at for yourself, compare the King James Bible to 41 different translations, see what's missing, and I talk about why it's missing. I tell about that in earlier parts of the book, and I show how when those things are taken out, the very doctrines are changed that people have questioned in now, modern times. Mm. Let me restate it. If you go to a modern poll about people's beliefs about the Bible, about Jesus Christ, about salvation, about Christianity, you'll find there are certain things they no longer believe or are no longer certain about. Mm -hmm. If you look in those modern Bibles, they are taking out, not all of them, but enough to make confusion on every one of those topics, mm -hmm. on who Jesus is, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, salvation by grace through faith, or, or is it through works, uh, the existence of angels, of devils, of heaven and hell, and uh, various historical things, and whether they're true or not. Now, these different topics are the very things. Was Jesus a liar? Was Jesus a sinner? Those are the exact things that are changed in modern Bibles. Yeah. Now, in every verse, but the devil knows better. If you take everything on a topic out, everybody will notice it. But if you only take enough out that think the verses start to contradict each other, that causes the, the, the four steps of Satan. is confusion. Yeah, as God said. Doubt. I'm not sure if God said. Disbelief. I don't think God said at all. And then rebellion. I'll go my own way and come up with my own idea. The devil doesn't care where on those four steps you are as long as you're on that that stairway to hell. And that's what he wants. Get Christians ineffectual so they cannot be effective with the gospel. And if you, But if you have a Bible that has all those things and is consistent, then you have something that is solid and you can hand it to somebody and say, I believe every word of this. I may not understand every word of this, but I believe every word of this. You'll never be driven wrong by this Bible. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, I was going to a, a Bible study at Gary and Susan Morgan's house in, in Hollywood this is back in 77, 78, and uh, Keith Green was there, the singer, contemporary Christian music singer mm -hmm. that became such a, a big influence in the Christian uh, music field. And he saw my living Bible, he, he called it a piece of bubble gum. And I was so insulted. But then as I began to look at some of the things that are missing in the, the living Bible, it made it easy to read, but boy, oh boy, so many things. And I look at uh, Ken Taylor, who was the publisher. He lost his voice. And do you think, you know, I'm just wondering, do you think that's maybe why he realized, man, I've, I've eliminated a lot of God's word? And uh, He said so. He actually said so, and, my, and Ron over at Chick was there. And to hear him say it, I have it in one of my videos. Really? Where he directly said it. He actually said it. I think it's in You Don't Know Jack, the book, and in the You Don't Know Jack um, YouTube series I made. He said, I think that my, you know, he'd gone to a, his counselor and stuff and, and said that I think that it's because I tampered with his word, wow. which is why I lost my voice. Wow. That's his word. Wow. He said so. But I give you the quote in the video and in the book. Now, is there anybody in the New Testament who also lost their voice because they doubted God's word? I know somebody who lost his sight. I mean, not his sight. Not yeah. His sight. I don't, um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, listen, uh, if people have never handed out tracts before, what what do you suggest they start with? Uh, how can they order these tracts? Well, of course, today is Halloween, so you're probably not going to get anything delivered today. We're not no. open. No. <laughs> right, right. But there's, there's lots of different things you can do. Um, as far as if you have tracks in your hands and you've got something to work with, there's like, here's nine easy ways. Um, one of the things that we do with our comics is we make coloring books out of them. Jack used to do this. I have one still pinned in the office. You saw it last week when you were there. Yeah. Um, or two weeks ago, whatever. There's, uh, you take uh, two or three crayons, wrap them in a rubber band, put them in a Ziploc bag with, with, with uh, the tracks, like uh, Little Ghost, which I wrote, by the way, and they get to color that and make their own little coloring book out of it, but they're also getting the gospel as they do. Second one, some people take them like with sweet tarts or the, the, the candies, the little Smarties they're called, those little uh, rolls full of candy or whatever, and then they wrap the tracks around them with a rubber band. That's another one. Another one is to make a large bowl, fill it with candy, and then line the tracks around the outside. Say, grab some candy from the inside and a track from the outside. Give them the choice. There's also, um, we have variety packs. It's the most uh, popular thing we have at Chick Publications, the variety pack. Uh, they get the kids' variety pack or the adult variety pack, and they can go through and they can pick their tracks from there. Uh, and then you put them in a, in a giant bowl. That's what we're doing tonight. We got our giant bowl and all our nice, good candy bars. Okay. I don't want to give them anything cheap. I want them to think two things. One, they get nice candy bars, and two, they get the tracks. 
Yeah. More of them are excited about the tracks and the candy bars. Yeah. They know what candy bars are. The right. tracks got the comics, they got the stories, they love them. Right. Um, right. Also, there's, we have like the little light of the world, little shots animation um, that people can put with tracks. Um, another one, <clears throat> let's see, you could dress up as a Bible character. And so you don't have to dress up as something like a goal or a goblin. Of course, this year, and dress up like anything with a mask, and they'll go, where's your costume? <laughs> Everybody's wearing a mask. Um, one group of, of Christians with chick tracks went out door, door to door, knocking on the doors of houses and saying, trick or tract, and then they handed the resident tract. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so David, instead of them coming, David, we yeah. have just a couple minutes left. Uh, you did an interview with me here uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, for how can people see that, and how can people get these tracks? Okay. Well, for, first of all, to go to Chick Publications, it's easy. www.chick.com. That's it. And if you want to find all the stuff that I've, most of the stuff that I've done, my books and the YouTube, uh, links to the YouTube channel, you can go to www.chick.com slash Bible. That'll take you there. Or you can go to YouTube at youtube.com slash C, like in comic, C slash Chick Tracks. And or just go to YouTube and type David W. Daniels and look for any tr any video that says Chick Tracks on it. And then go to that site. Now, uh, in the remaining minute and a half we have, if people are listening and they don't have that assurance of salvation that if they were to die tonight, what do they do? Well, the first thing you got to do is realize that you yourself are a sinner. You cannot save yourself. Second of all, you need to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Somebody did it. He paid your sin debt. He did what you could not do. And you need to, you need to turn from anything you thought was going to save you, anything and everything you ever thought was going to save you, your religious works, your good works, bad works, any works, payments, church attendance, anything. You have to turn from that. Repent. Turn to God. Drop all that. Face Jesus Christ. And then... You need to believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose from the dead, and then and then pray and ask Him to be your Savior. Amen. Ask Amen. Him, take Him, receive Him as your Savior. To them that received Him, gave you the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. And then ask the Lord to guide you to a good Bible-believing church. David Daniels from Chick Publications, thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you, brother. Keep on the firing line. Give my love Amen. to the saints. God bless you, too. God bless All you, right. brother. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. If you'd like to hear today's program, uh, Brandon will have it up on YouTube, hopefully in a few days. Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. Super Dave puts the newsletter out. The new, uh, November newsletter has just come out. Uh, just go to TrackMan, T-R-A-C-T-M-A-N, TB at iCloud.com. TrackMan, TB at iCloud.com. Pray for Huey and I as we hit uh, the bridge this afternoon with Track that many souls will be saved. And Daryl Porter, 25 Reasons Why Christians Should Vote Republican. Or should, Well, anyway, he'll be my guest next week after President Trump wins in that landslide. Make sure you get out and vote. God bless you, my friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>
the Lord. Give me gas for my Lord. 